Hey there, this episode of Tales from the Backlog is brought to you by the patrons of the Tube Podcast Network. Some very cool people like Chris Nelson, the Top 3 Podcast Crew, Zolgeek, Colby Moyer, Eric Guess, Rick Firestone, Jill, Kieran, ZNA, and many more have gone to patreon.com slash real Dave Jackson, thrown me a few bucks to support the shows that we do here on the Tube you can be just like them if you head to patreon.com slash real Dave Jackson. You will get some bonus content. You will get voting rights on episodes of Tales from the Backlog and a top three podcast. And you will get my undying love and respect. All right, on to the show. <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Dave Jackson and this is Tales from the Backlog, a video games podcast where each week I'm joined by a guest to talk about a game we played. Today's a little bit different though because I'm joined by three wonderful guests to talk about video games and how long they are. Uh, But before we get too deep into that, I want to introduce today's special guests. First up, from Play Along Podcast, returning guest on the show, Jared Moss is back. Welcome back, Jared. Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for having me back, Dave. Always, always yeah. pleasure being here on the pod with you. Of course, man. It's been it's, it's been, been like minute. eight months since I talked yeah. to you. It's been a while, <laughs> yeah, dude. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, also joining us today is a returning guest on the show just from about a month ago now or earlier this month, depending on when I put this episode out from <laughs> the gaming and collecting podcast. Bill Barber is back. Welcome back, Bill. Hey, thanks for having me again, Dave. Of course, dude. Good to talk to you again. And also joining us today is a first time guest on the podcast. Very excited to talk to this guy here from Super Pod Saga, Aaron Clausen. Welcome. Yeah, what's up? It's uh, it's good to meet all you guys. How's yeah. it going? Yeah, for sure. We were, we were just saying like we've been interacting on Twitter for a long time. So good to finally uh, put a face to the name and chat with you. Yeah. So uh, before we get into our topic today, I want to give each of you guys a chance to explain uh, where people may know you. Um, I mean, I just said where people may know you, but what are your uh, what are your shows all about? What goes on over there? Uh, Jared, I'll kick to you first. Cool. Yeah. So I'm from Play Along Podcast. And what our show is, is a weekly podcast where we cover games in kind of like a book club format. What we'll do is me and my other two co-hosts will each take turns picking a game. We'll then get that game and break it into sections and then come together each week and kind of talk about the game specifically. And we just wrapped up Chrono Trigger and we're starting Papers, Please, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. Exciting to play that game. Hell yeah. And (laughs) I saw your schedule for Papers, Please. You guys are (laughs) you guys have broken that up into like 40 minute chunks of the game. Chrono Chrono Trigger was 11 weeks and this is going to be like six 45 minute. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But that's a uh, that's a really fun game. Um, There's a lot of good conversation to be generated from that. Uh, So I'm excited. And uh, by the time this episode comes out, like I said, I'm not exactly sure when it's coming, but you guys will be either just wrapping it up or kind of Ooh. in the late stages. So people can go back and start from the beginning and play along with Papers, Please with you guys. Uh, so once again, welcome back. Uh, play Along Podcast is uh, um, one of my staple shows, and I'm excited to have you back. So awesome. uh, next, I will kick to you, Bill. Uh, Since you were just on the show not too long ago, uh, remind people what's going on on gaming and collecting. So I'm Bill. I'm the one of the co-hosts of the Gaming Collecting Podcast is a uh, gaming and anime based uh, nostalgia podcast where me and my sister Alex kind of go over different games from uh, our childhood that we uh, played a lot growing up. We also talk about some more modern stuff or sometimes we talk about non-gaming topics. It's really it's kind of just whatever's going through our brains at the time. Mm hmm. Yeah. And this is what I said on the uh, Pokemon trading card game episode that we did together. But you guys, you just have such a 
like deep well of knowledge about video games and video game history that if I want to like, if I want to learn something about video games, tune into gaming and collecting for sure. And uh, like I said, first time guest on the show, Aaron from uh, Super Pod Saga. What's going on over there? Um, well, yeah, I mean, uh, Super Pod Saga went on a, a hiatus for a little bit. We might get back together depending on our schedules work out. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we're, yeah, we're on YouTube, Spotify, like pretty much everywhere. But check us out. Kind of like a um, like a topic grab bag type show, right? Oh, yeah. Like, it'll go from like from canceled games to the PlayStation one to whatever super complicated type title Tommy comes up with. And then we just go and be stupid about all that stuff. (laughs) Yeah. The first thing I noticed uh, when I went to check out your show a little bit ago was the artwork, like the Mario and Luigi RPG, like inspired artwork instantly. I was like, Oh, that's fucking cool. I need to, I need to get a graphic designer and get some of that. Oh, it it was a, (laughs) It was a weird story with that too. So we, uh, I mean, Tommy and I, um, we go back all the way to grade school, but like one of the mm. games that we both mutually love is, is, uh, Mario and Luigi superstar saga. Oh, such a and, game. um, classic. And this, and I, I first, uh, went to get a commission for, for a piece for our like new thumbnail or we want to call it from, uh, this smaller art account because all the big ones, uh, I, I, they were charging like 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. So this other smaller account was, they did it for like, it was like 80 bucks, but I don't nice. know why I'm talking about money. It's it's great. It's a great thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, they did a hell of a job. It's mm. really good. So sad that that studio that made the Mario Luigi isn't around anymore. Such a shame. I know. Yeah. Rip. Mm. I mean, when you I make mean, a remake of a game that didn't need to make, have a remake, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it was already on already on a console that you could have played on a, on a 3DS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get that for the time. No, no, no. no. Remake. Yeah. Remake everything. That's, that's the mentality. Remake it all. <laughs> yeah. You know, remakes, most games that need remakes never get them, and the games that don't need them get them all the time. So, uh-huh. <laughs> look at Rolling yeah. at you, Last of Us. 100, 1 million percent. <laughs> Resident Evil 4, excuse, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> that is a topic for another episode, my friends. Yeah. Uh, let us dig into today's topic. So, today we're going to be talking about long video games. Uh, this is a break from the backlog episode. However, uh, when I say long video games, I don't mean uh, we're not asking the question are video games too long and we're not talking about dollars per hour or something like that Um, what i've realized when i because i've been thinking about this recently as i played some long video games like xenoblade chronicles 3 Mm. and uh elden ring this year long ass game what i've been realizing is that there's no answer to are video games too long some of them are too fucking long and some of them are just fine And so instead, I think that we should dig into the question, why are some games too fucking long? And some of them are 120 hours and entertain you the entire way through. (laughs) How does it turn out that way? So what we're going to do is start with, um, we're going to start out positive and talk about some long games that we played that held our attention the entire way through. We're going to dig into why. Why is it that you can play this game that most people would see the hour count and like get scared. But why did it hold your attention the entire time? Mm -hmm. So um, I'll get us started with one. And um, let's see, let me pick one from my list here. I just talked about Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I think that that game felt long. Uh, I don't want to spoil what I said in my episode, but uh, I felt I think that game felt long at times. However, I played Xenoblade Chronicles 2 for 120 hours. I never felt that game drag one bit. And mm. the big difference, though, is the combat kept me engaged the entire time. Have you guys played this game before? I have not. I have not touched a yep. single Xenoblade game. <laughs> I am about like a quarter of the way in. It got, I, I enjoyed it, but I, it kind of got backlogged for the time being because I have mm-hmm. too many games. <laughs> it's too many That's games, it. and this is too a long games. game. <laughs> yeah. I think we had like a small discussion about Xenoblade 3 over Twitter one time about how the job system is just, it makes zero difference at all to the game. Yeah. Like that. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's another thing about Xenoblade 3 that made it drag was they just, they introduced so many mechanics that don't do anything, they're just there. And I did not feel that way about about Xenoblade 2. I was both intrigued by the story and satisfied by the mechanics for the entire 120 hours. And Mm -hmm. it just, 
I, that was one of those games that like, uh, my wife would be like, are you going to do anything today? Or are you just going to play that? <laughs> like it was one of those. Like, no, just, just Xenoblade. That's all we're doing. Yeah. That's all, that's, that's all we're doing. So anyway, that's Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Uh, that's one of mine. I will kick it to one of you guys. What's another one of your games you played for a long time and just loved the whole way? It's not really a secret. My favorite video game of all time is Persona 4 Golden. Mm -hmm. And Persona 4 Golden is over 130 hours, which is honestly actually like an added 10 hours from the original Persona 4 <laughs> when you actually play it. More gun. Yeah. And it's so explaining the Persona series is interesting because it is a turn based RPG series that combines um, traditional RPG mechanics with like social sim and like life sim aspects. And Persona 4, like, I will say it has one of the slow, has a very slow start, but once you get past that first, like, hour, the game, mm -hmm. like, drags you in, because you, it's a murder mystery, and you want to know, like, what's happening with the story, and, like, mm -hmm. it tricks you, like, with who the actual villain at the end is going to be, yes. and the, Love a twist. one of the, yeah, and one of the cool aspects of, like, the Persona series is, like, the social links and the, uh, and the, uh, ch the stuff you do in the social part of the game, where you, uh, unlock more of the characters' storylines and backgrounds and it really helps you when you're in like the actual rpg segments and it i always say like it's like the story is what keeps me engaged and then i love like exploring the uh the dungeons the world like fusing personas and like mm -hmm. trying to like unlock like all the ultimate personas throughout the game and i've played so it's an over 130 hour game and I play, I do a yearly playthrough. Like I played the game about 12, oh. 12 times at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yearly playthrough. And it never gets old. Like I know the story like front and back now and I yet n not once Damn. gone bored. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to play it. Honestly, the way that you talk about it, the way that some of our other friends in the podcast scene talk about it. I can't wait. Once it hits switch, I'm all over it. Yeah. We've only got a couple more months for that. Oh, yeah. yeah, right, right. It's coming. Uh, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy it for a fifth time. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know it. That's how you know it's great. Uh, yeah, I'll yeah. jump in next. One of my big ones and the game that I can sink so much time to, and I played so many times, was Breath of the Wild. I had to give mm. some love to Legend of Zelda. I, I think you know we talk about why games hook us and why long games can keep us attentive for so long. I think Zelda, with me personally helps because i have such a fondness for the franchise i've played most if not all of the games i loved the all of the references to older games and even just like little things like oh lake hylia it, it just references the other games in breath of the wild kept me going and returning to that game so many times uh i'm going through and i'm going before the sequel comes out i'm gonna get all the koroks i haven't done it yet oh. it's <laughs> I'm going my, my original playthrough. I kind of just got grabbed them as I was going through. So I have I have a decent amount. So I'm going back there. You're like, you know, I'm going to do the Koroks, but just like a game that could hold my attention for that long. So many times because I've restarted it a couple times too, mm -hmm. doing master mode, doing the DLC and everything like that. And every time I go back, it's just still such an enjoyable experience. Nice. That game made me a Zelda fan because like I, I didn't really yeah, care. Awesome. I did not care for the series much other than like a link oh, between worlds man. and like that yeah. game actually made me go back and between play like, great a lot of them. Yes, it is. Yeah. And I'm I kind of don't want to say my pick because it's it's a game that like nobody ever mentions or talks about. And that's I had to pick one from the series and it's e and Odyssey Nexus. Uh -huh. and, uh, and oh, my gosh. Oh, so it's um. I tried so hard to not pick RPGs for this, but it, I don't. <laughs> hey, RPGs are unavoidable, man. It's yeah. this, is, this is an RPG yeah. and open world game topic right here. Okay, so a lot yeah. of them. So it's uh, so it's basically this. Um, it's it's uh, like a first person like dungeon crawler RPG, but it's mm -hmm. like a real heavy emphasis on like character building and stats. So like when you start out, you uh, you, know, you you name your guild whatever. I usually just call mine like like vomit or puke or something like that because I have no soul. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then you make your characters and you can pick like, um, certain character portraits. You can, you know, pick their name, their, um, like their voice or whatever the hell. And then you can pick their class and there's just a bunch of different classes. Mm -hmm. Cause this was supposed to be like the last entry on the 3ds. So they went out all out with all the different classes. So this rather than having like, so cool, it's, it's awesome, man. Rather than having like just vanilla ass, like mage and like warrior and stuff, they have like 
Zodiac and like Sovereign and shit like that. And um, so yeah, you have what three three people in your front row who can soak up hits or dodge hits and stuff like that. And your back row is like mages or healers and shit like that. And then as you go along, you use the bottom screen on the 3DS with your stylus to draw the map as you mm-hmm. go. Yeah, that's right. But there's an option to, um, to have the map auto draw, but like, don't do that. But that takes <laughs> yeah. away the entire point of the series. <laughs> exactly. Don't do that to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just it sucks you in with this sweet little little gameplay loop of you just you start fresh in this fresh new awesome new labyrinth, and um, and you kill monsters, you get new materials, take those materials back to town, sell them, get new equipment. You go further into the labyrinth, you fight more badass monsters, and you continue and fight the boss and yada 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 and then you beat the game but Mm -hmm. um that game also lets you multi-class so you can mash and mix two different classes together Mm -hmm. and oh my god it's just it's so rewarding it it absolutely rewards you for your time with all the different um uh, skill and class synergies and uh, oh man god damn it yeah 200 hours into that goddamn room (laughs) cut the art art looks really cool for this uh you kind of hooked me with talking about this i was like this game sounds great uh i went to ebay to look what they're going for oh anywhere from like (laughs) 200 to 300 dollars for physical copies of this game like you should you should just never go on eBay and look up how much retro <laughs> games are going for. You never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it, take it from a from a veteran. Uh, don't don't do it. Don't go on yeah. eBay and look at retro games. Okay, okay. Yeah, so. I, I will say though, like I'm playing Untold right now, and those games, yeah, dude, those games like are long as they are. But if you're like super like meticulous with drawing your maps, it takes like about three times as long mm. to get through them. <laughs> but you never get bored. It really does because it'll be like do i want to use this icon to represent like a lever or a switch or do i want to just got it or like what am i gonna do oh this was atlas yeah. i didn't realize this was atlas that's cool yeah oh, oh my hmm. gosh dude okay atlas is atlas is well represented yeah um aaron so you talked about the loop and like how satisfying the loop is how how long would you say that like a loop is in those games not very long at all really like you just um kind of like like persona they have these items that you warp out of the dungeon wherever you are and go back to the town mm-hmm. and then um once you go back to town you can just go back to whatever floor you were on in that dungeon okay so it's really quick you can just pop in blast some enemies to bits and then just warp right back to town and sell your stuff yeah. and then just hop right back in oh that's so cool that's yeah. so nifty to have that's so i think we're we're hitting on a couple of things that make long games kind of fly by quickly mm-hmm. um so Bill and I both talked about a game with a story that really pulls us in, you know, a, a mm-hmm. good story hook really helps. Yeah, and, right. um, obviously if a game's going to be a hundred hours long, you have to continue the story the whole time. But, uh, persona, my only persona experience is persona five, but that game has a tight gameplay loop mm-hmm. that will just keep you coming back. Uh, unless you're doing one of the dungeons, then it can kind of drag a little bit, but the, the life sim stuff, like the day to day going through the calendar, same with Breath of the Wild. Like mm-hmm. one of the things I like about that is you're always kind of like making your own goals or making your own yep. kind of mini challenges, like climb up this cliff, figure out how to get up there. Or, you know, you do a shrine, a shrine takes a couple minutes, figure out that little puzzle. You're always making a little bit of progress. And then when you're done with that, you you know, you climbed up that cliff, you look off in the distance, you find the next thing that you want to go check out, hop on that paraglider, go down and check it out. That whole loop mm-hmm. just takes a few minutes, but you get that feeling of satisfaction. Yeah. And then it's time to start it over again. And Breath of the Wild's another one I played where the hours just like flew past. And I don't know exactly oh, how yeah. long I played it, but it's got to be at least 70, 80 hours yeah, when I did. Yeah. So I, I think that definitely helps, you know, when you can find these little kind of nuggets of instant gratification you know you look at a game in its entirety and you're like man that's a hundred hours that's a long time but then if you yeah. think about it like if you're doing if you're breaking that down into smaller sections where that's like doing a dungeon in persona or that's like finding those small goals in breath of the wild like climbing or exploring and getting a shrine if you break that up into small digestible content it's a lot easier to absorb that and it doesn't feel as overwhelming either mm-hmm. yeah 100 percent I also love when games actually reward you for exploring too, rather than oh, being yeah, like, yeah. here's this open ass area with nothing there. But like Breath of the Wild is cool because it'll be like, 
you went to like the farthest reaches of you know this area you found either like a korok seed or you find like some other awesome hidden weapons same with the dungeons too like or the mm-hmm. shrines or whatever it yeah. was like those puzzles really really reward you with some sweet mm-hmm. shit at the end of it and that's yeah for sure you gotta reward yeah. people for their efforts damn it back in <laughs> uh back in july or so i did a topic episode talking about open world games mm-hmm. and this there's some overlap here because we talked about some games that are open world but they they feel padded and they drag on and we talked about things that make open world games like really addictive if they're done really well and that exploration has to be there otherwise like i don't want to explore your open world if i don't do if i don't get anything whether it's like treasure or seeing a cool fucking skeleton like in elden ring (laughs) sometimes i don't find any treasure but there's a giant fucking like skull in the side of a cliff that's cool you know a sweet fucking skull hell yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) who doesn't love a sweet fucking skull right (laughs) so or you're exploring a dungeon you find a treasure chest and it's like what is this and it says don't open it <laughs> don't do it and then you open it it's a reaper and it's it, oh, mega boss that, and you're like that, yeah, that okay. got me in, in dark souls <laughs> when i played that for the first time opening those chests i'm like oh this is gonna be cool oh, with, with the teeth pain. and shit the mimics yeah pain. man the mimics. Oh, I love in, that. in persona 4 literally one of like a random chest item you can get sometimes is literally a super boss <laughs> that's oh, like the hardest enemy in the so game mean <laughs> well <laughs> they warn you in advance like y- your uh y- your two guides either Risa or teddy will be like don't open this chest. Uh, trust us, but you can open it anyways. Like, and it's the I do what freaking... I want. I'm the main yeah. party member here. I make the rules. I'm going to open this chest if I want to. And that's the Reaper, and you die. <laughs> and yeah. then you die very quick. <laughs> exactly. But if you win, you get your ultimate weapon, so. Yeah. There you go. So, uh, almost kind of goes with Etrian Odyssey a little bit, too, except, like, minus the mini-boss part. There'll be, like, mm-hmm. little parts in each labyrinth, or there'll be, like, a small not, like, a story segment, but it'll be, like, the characters are working together to overcome this goal, whether it's to, like, grab a fruit from a tree or like get fire ants off of somebody or something. <laughs> mm. And, uh, and I, I'm just a huge freaking wee, but I'll, I'll like, I'll, uh, like, I, I guess dictate each character's personality and like how they would act in real life if they were real and mm. all this stuff. And yeah, exploration rocks. Yeah. Uh, let's go around for one more each, uh, well, games, okay. games that are really long that we loved to the end. Um, I haven't had a lot of chances to shout this game out on the show, but it's one of my favorite games ever. It's Divinity Original Sin 2, which yes. is just a a modern like computer CRPG classic. It is it's an incredible game. It is a long ass game though. Like I would say like 80 to 90 hours minimum to get through the story and mm-hmm. do, you know, some side quests. Uh but so I played this for a hundred hours. Um I played this on Switch. It was great. Perfect Switch game. Switch long games, handheld, perfect match made in heaven. Um, the thing about Divinity Original Sin 2 is, like you said earlier, Aaron, exploration, you're always rewarded when you explore in that game. Either you find things to fight so you can level up, mm-hmm. you find some treasure. That game has a ton of loot to pick up. Uh, maybe you'll find some side quests. The thing that keeps me going through that game is the mechanics are so fun. Like, have you guys played this or played the uh, the original uh, Divinity Original Sin? I haven't. This is another one that's on my backlog of like, I need to check out these games. Cause I've heard so many good things about them. Yeah. I'm adding this one to the list right now. <laughs> <laughs> I played the, me and a buddy co op through the first one. And that's just such a nice. blast when you have a, a friend there. Co-op I think co op definitely them. helps in these situations. Like, if a game is longer, but you're grinding through like these dungeons with a buddy, I think that definitely can help, you know, mitigate the time a little bit. Yeah. So, Aaron, uh, the, the second game is very similar mechanically to the first one. So they added a couple tweaks to the way that like armor works, but it's mostly the same. Those mechanics, the way that combat works, the, the turn-based combat is like yeah, it's, incredible. It's so deep. There are so many ways that you can solve your problems in combat in that game. And is, is this the one on switch? Yeah, there's, there's one on switch divinity, original right. sin two on switch. Oh, cool. Um, also on Steam, and I, I, it's on uh, like PlayStation and stuff too. But yeah, I think I think if you're gonna play this, you should either play it on Steam because it's it's probably best with mouse and keyboard, honestly, mm-hmm. or play it on Switch where you can play handheld or Steam Deck. That's a thing now too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Steam Deck. Um, but the the combat and the the ways that you can use all of your skills, everything your characters can do to like 
just solve the unique situations that each combat gives you is infinitely satisfying. And I like I played for a hundred hours, never went through a fight and was like, you know, that was not fun. Even mm-hmm. there's some fights that go on for way too long, but you're still doing top three turn-based combat ever. So, you know, yeah. it's not that bad. Yeah, sometimes there are a lot of like little puzzles. Um, those are when you're already co-oping with somebody because you can have one mm-hmm. person to control like well, with the first game, they didn't have it to four people. You just had two, but you could have one person control right. two people and one person control another two. And, and that that was really, mm-hmm. really sweet too, working together with a friend to try to take down this big, bad, like lava skeleton pirate monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good shit. Yeah, I'll turn it over to you guys. So that's a game that just has like mm. the best mechanics and that yeah. never get never get old. Uh, the story's fine, but the mechanics are the bread and butter for sure. That's but I'll turn it to you guys. What do we got? Stuff. So uh, my uh, second game I want to talk about is, uh, it's pretty recently released, but um, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Another one in my backlog. I love, so I, I, <laughs> I'm, like a lot of people, I got into the Fire Emblem series with uh, Fire Emblem Awakening, which mm-hmm. was like the series breakthrough. And I, I adore Fire Emblem Awakening as it is, but uh, Three Houses when that one came out. This game is like so addicting to play and so like complex for it's what it is. <laughs> like I-, I always joke saying that this game this game is a better Fire Emblem Shin Megami Tensei crossover than the actual Fire Emblem Shin Megami Tensei <laughs> crossover <laughs> was. <laughs> like I I love exploring the uh, the school and like interacting mm-hmm. with all the different students, like yeah. um, helping them out on their little tasks. Um, uh, f- then fulfilling all of like the class like goals so you can recruit everybody which is really cool mm-hmm. and you can just have this massive army of like students to get through the game story plus the game story has like a surprise twist in the middle of it which changes everything and there's like a dlc chapter which is super addicting and it, it, it's all the little things like exploring all these little crevices like interacting with the students like getting the uh more of their uh, character development through uh, interactions. It, it's not too heavy on the weird, like, romancy stuff that uh, mm-hmm. Awakening was super into. And yeah, there's no, especially. Like, there's no, like, fucking, like, skinship in Three Houses. Uh, you, you don't like to rub your wife? <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, like, I love all that stuff. And then, of course, the combat, like, the bread and butter of the series is so freaking addicting and, like, exploring these huge battlefields and, like, the, the constant like threat of like oh no I'm gonna lose someone um I gotta redo this or I gotta like rethink my strategy here it, it's just one of those like a minute too like there's a mm-hmm. the permadeath yeah. uh... so you get the option you can either do the uh, classic mode or uh, casual mode I prefer casual mode just because like it, you're gonna be restarting every time you still lose someone anyway so like yeah, I'm just gonna yeah. take nope. take that mm-hmm. out of there but yeah that this one's one of my uh, all time favorites and it never gets old yeah. I've I've played through two of the routes in that game. That's about 130 hours of gameplay. So Hell yeah, dude. I've got two routes to go. Um, I'm going to do it sometime. I love that well, game. If you're not counting DLC, it, there's actually like five more to go. Okay. You guys I, played, I uh, guess I'm uh, not counting. Uh, was it Fates? The one that? Or yeah, the, uh, Fates is good too. We played like play three. That. Yeah, yeah. Was it Revelation, mm-hmm. Birthright, and Conquest? Conquest? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. The thing with the uh, thing with three houses is it's got that persona thing. It's got that life sim uh, loop. Yep. So when you're going through like throughout the week, you can like maybe knock out one week of like classes and school stuff and then one mission. And that's your like you that's your like 30 minutes to play or something like that. Yep. And it feels good to like it's like Jared said, it's that instant gratification to like mm-hmm play a little bit and you've knocked a week off the calendar and you're on to the next thing, the next story beat or the next, you know, if you're just even just grinding up some characters, Mm -hmm. it's a, it's another one of those games that has a real tight loop that never gets old. Or you can spend an entire day cooking, gardening, or fishing just because. Because <laughs> it's because it's a JRPG. Yeah. I was going to say that too. You spend a whole day fishing. Uh, yeah. the, the class system, though, is really, really sweet compared to other mm-hmm. games. Others mm-hmm. like multiple tiers for classes instead of yeah. being like, oh, this. This uh, this night turned into a heavy night, or whatever the hell it's called. Yeah, uh, and, and you have to actually incorporate the class system into the recruiting system because the only way to recruit really people cool. is you have to you have to like raise uh, Byleth to like certain stats mm-hmm. throughout the game. What what I'm realizing oh, yeah. 
this has just become an episode of you guys recommending cool games that I don't have time to play. And I'm like, it's, yeah. no, I don't have time for this. This sounds awesome. <laughs> it's on the but Switch. Damn, you can play it anywhere. You can play it on the toilet or like on the roof if you want. Yeah, you can play it at rooftop parties or on the bus. Hell or, yeah. You can help me take yeah. out the tree limb in my yard and, and play that if you want. <laughs> <laughs> like fire emblem in the process. Yeah. We're uh, that's I, I just realized that we are just doing nothing but recommending the longest games ever right now. Yeah, yeah. Go play all. We'll wait till we get to the negative part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so my next one is actually I see show up a couple times in the negative parts, but we we talk about like why games are interesting to us and why they stick. I think for a while, and a lot of us can probably attest to this, I was going through like open world fatigue. Where it felt mm-hmm. like every game that was coming oh, out was open world. I was just like, I'm, I'm going to take a hiatus. I'm going to stop playing big open world games for a while and just play l- little other things, little smaller experiences. So I got back into the habit of like, you know what? I kind of want to dive into a big open world again. So I started playing Assassin's Creed Origins. Mm-hmm. So I love Assassin's Creed and I stopped playing after Black Flag. So I, haven't, I didn't play a lot of them after that. Uh, mm. I just fell in love with Assassin's Creed Origins. I will preface, I didn't care about the story. I see some good <laughs> compliments about the story being bland. That wasn't what was enticing to me. I was like, whatever, I'll skip this cutscene. But uh-huh. the open world, like pulling out from the map once you get it and just seeing it's like massive, where a lot of people might be intimidated. I was like, this is really cool. Like I was really excited to explore. The game looked beautiful. This was kind of the beginning of them kind of shifting what Assassin's Creed was and it's kind of it's like DNA but I felt like it had enough original Assassin's Creed with the sneaking and the stealth and then enough of the RPG mechanics to keep me interested like I loved finding new weapons I loved finding new loot I loved upgrading things I love upgrading all the skills it's cool that this I mean I I didn't care about the story but it's cool that this is the beginning of the Assassin's kind of where it originated and everything so conceptually it's an interesting idea but I love just exploring this world, finding new things, finding new mounts to to ride, finding new weapons. It was just it was a good time. I think I've, I've put I haven't finished it, but I've put like 50 or 60 hours into it, maybe a little more. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm still having a blast right on. Hell yeah. Those camels, too, man. Yeah, Assassin's Creed is <laughs> like one of those series that like I always see and I'm always like, I really want to play this. But I'm like, I never have time to sit down and play any of these. Mm hmm. It's, it's, it's the same thing as one of those things, same with Breath of the Wild, same with a lot of the games we've talked about, especially in Assassin's Creed, because there's like compounds that you can take over in like similar yeah. Assassin's Creed format. You could just be like, cool, I'm going to go and I'm going to tackle this and I'm going to explore a little bit of this map and then I'm done. And the next time yeah. I'm going to try to find this next outpost, explore a little more of the map and you kind of just break it into digestible segments. Yeah, I will. I'm going to talk about Assassin's Creed later in a different <laughs> section of the podcast, <laughs> oh, but no. uh, I will totally give you the fact that like let's say that you boot up an Assassin's Creed game, a modern one, and yeah. you, you have, you're you like, okay, I have 45 minutes to play. You can totally just go to one of those compounds, clear it out, get your treasure, and that's what you did. And you, 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 know, you set a goal, you finished that, you probably had some fun doing it, and then you're, you're ready to move on to the next thing the next time you play. Um, I totally, and I, I love clearing out bases in those yeah. games. Mm-hmm. That, in those, in Ghost of Tsushima and any of those yeah. games like that i love clearing out the bases stealth whatever had a good time hell yeah man so, uh, speaking of camels i'm gonna <laughs> use my, my, my favorite transition thing, phrase yeah, speaking <laughs> of camels. yeah we, we specialize in those over in super pod saga oh we, yeah we have all sorts of weird stupid tommy's way better than, than i am with them but um <laughs> the next one i had picked was uh was bravely default 2 um okay and oh man um so it's just the story was is just like it, it'll really kind of keep you guessing because it's just really weird. Um, but uh, I, I put so much time into that game, just kind of like tinkering around with the with the different jobs and stuff. So so it's just like your regular um, turn based RPG. But it's, uh, it's just got this super deep job system. Um, mm-hmm. So it's like so one job has like one passive ability and then all of their like attack skills and shit like that. Um, but you can also set like a subclass for a character to where they get, you know, that that job's uh, attack abilities and shit like that. And um, being able to mix and match different uh, jobs with different skills and stuff like it. It's just so satisfying to make like like the tankiest, beefiest, tankiest boy in the world with by mixing like a shield mm-hmm. master and a bastion and um, and they can equip two shields, which is stupid. But um, <laughs> oh, and then and it's just 
Um, everything's just so quick too. Like, cause like the battles, they, you yeah. can speed them along like super quickly, which is really great. Mm-hmm. Sometimes depending on how far along you are in the game, they can drag on, especially the boss battles. It's when you're playing against a, uh, an asterisk holder. Holy shit. Is that <laughs> shit drag on? Because they, they counter like fucking anything you do. You could just, you could heal a party member and they'll be like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to insta kill your one healer just because oh, you heal. No. Which is stupid, because then it's like, okay, well, I have to spend a turn bringing this bitch back, but then, mm-hmm. but it's, it's rewarding though, because then you beat them and you get their 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 yeah. asterisk, which unlocks that job for you essentially. But mm. um, I've put almost, I think, like I want to say about 150 hours into it. Ooh, yeah, there's also yeah. quite a bit of of side stuff you can do, um, and then there's there's, there's optional job. Usually the jobs you'll find Mm -hmm. as you go around the story but there's some that are optional that you can pick up and um but yeah just it's 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 awesome it's it's so fun i'm so glad they 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 learned from bravely default one with that replaying the fucking game like four times to beat the game oh and you gotta (laughs) oh no oh no no. no. that's a big thing too because i played a little bit of bravely default 2 and having a sense of like customizability in games and being able to kind of like, especially like at RPGs like that kind of like, okay, what works for me? What can I move around? What jobs can I lean more into? What jobs can I mix around to kind of work for my system? And I think when games do that, they like add more replayability because every run, every time you play through it, you could try something different and, and try new yeah. kind of classes out. And when you're doing that, you're always building towards something too. Yeah. Like with those job systems, I remember in final fantasy tactics, I'm always thinking about like the next job that I'm going to unlock mm-hmm. and the next like, okay, I'm going to have this character learn this move then I'm going to switch into this job so they can learn this move. And you always have those goals and then you're constantly reaching them. Mm-hmm. And it kind of reinforces that kind of loop of challenge, success, you know, objective, success, repeat, repeat, repeat. And then suddenly, like you said, you've been playing for 150 hours. Um, yeah. We got a lot of correspondence from people when I reached out um, on uh, Patreon and in the Discord server and on Twitter. I asked these people the same question as I asked you guys. So we split this up. I asked uh, lots of people, what games did you love all the way through? And uh, we're going to get through those and uh, see what everybody said. So I'll go ahead and get us started with Jake, who wrote in via Patreon. Uh, Jake says Elden Ring. Uh, Elden Ring was on my list too, Jake. Uh, Jake says Elden Ring found a sweet spot of fun gameplay and interesting world building and or good story. Um, I know when I played through Elden Ring, I did not pick up on the story much, but I thought the world was super interesting. And I'm a From Software gameplay sicko. So that was like extremely my shit too. Uh, I did a whole episode about Elden Ring's open world. Uh, that was the open world discussion. You can go listen to that if you want to hear a bunch of talk about that. That was with Andrew and Dylan from Your Friendly Neighborhood Gamers. That was a good chat. Nice. Uh, so yeah, Elden Ring, good call, Jake. A lot of game. Yes. <laughs> Next, we have Adam. That's also via Patreon. Uh, he says, FromSoft Games or Binding of Isaac. Thousands of hours. Variety is key. Isaac enforces a variety and novelty. And then FromSoft where incentivizes it too which yeah. as a uh, new from soft game in- enthusiast and someone who's diving into these games as of recent thank you dave um yeah, i can welcome. definitely see people getting <laughs> lost in dark souls elden ring bloodborne for mm-hmm. hours and if not getting lost in it for hours replaying it over and over and over again trying different things like they said uh, adam says variety is key like you can play through dark souls hundreds of times and have different builds every time and have a different experience so yeah for yeah. sure we oh God, none of us brought up. Too. Sorry. Go ahead. Aaron. Sorry, Aaron. No, you're, uh, I was, was going to say the same thing goes with uh, with Binding of Isaac as well too, because you're always unlocking mm. shit with every playthrough, and it, yeah, no yeah. playthrough is the same because you have different uh, power ups every single time. But yeah, I was going to say that like I none of us brought up roguelikes on our right. um, our kind of examples here, but a lot of roguelikes like Binding of Isaac and Spelunky and stuff like that, things that are different every time you play it. Mm -hmm. There are so many people that like, they're like, you know, uh, my most played game um, is, let's say, oh, I played, you know, I played Bloodborne for a really long time. Oh, uh, also I have 3000 hours in the Binding of Isaac. It's one of those games. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, so next, uh, Moonborn via Patreon, uh, stylized action, uh, games like Bayonetta, Metal Gear Rising, Dead Cells, Bunny Must Die, among others. Games that are reasonably short and have deep, expressive combat systems and thrills to no chase. Metal Gear Rising, Doug, nice shot, nice shot to Metal Gear Rising there. I like yeah. that game. Uh, oh, that, you, that game is so fun and goofy. Too. Yeah. It's great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just want to give a quick shout out to Moonborn. Uh, Moonborn mentions the Bayonettas and Metal Gear Rising. Uh, Moon does YouTube Let's Plays of like the high level of those games. Uh, nonstop Infinite Climax, it's called in Bayonetta, which is hilarious uh, phrasing. <laughs> That's amazing. For Bayonetta, yeah. But um, oh, Moon yeah. makes a good point. A lot of us, we're talking about long games. Uh, Moonborn's talking about these games that are like five to 10 hours long, but he's played them like 10, 15 times each. Mm, and we'll yeah, re- like play them and beat it and start again like those kinds of games um and it's it's that combat in those games if you really get into those platinum games dead cells and stuff it the, it can be just infinite fun oh well, yeah and that brings us to uh chris n from patreon who goes with star ocean till the end of time Oof, engaging nice gameplay shout. fulfilling progression compelling story in that order will help me get through a long game yeah. that game had the the twist of all twists that oh god wild. that plot yeah. twist <laughs> that that is a great game but my god that twist is like what <laughs> it's like i love it's i love insane. this is the only star ocean i played i know there's hundreds of them at this point but i remember mm-hmm. playing this back on the ps2 and it was so fun i, I loved playing this i haven't played it since like the old ps2 days i really need to pick it back up again mm. it's so good it's like the nice. last truly great one although six was yeah. pretty good i will i will admit okay okay right on this is um yeah this I'm surprised well, we talked about Persona but getting into uh, to JRPGs mm-hmm. for a JRPG to get me through you know 70 plus hours the gameplay has to be good I, I can't mm-hmm. do it if I don't really get on with the gameplay yeah. Persona 5 and Xenoblade 2 loved it so not hard to get through that for me um Next up, we have Eric, a good friend from the Unlockables podcast via Patreon. Uh, Eric says Monster Hunter World, not a surprise to anyone who knows Eric, uh, probably because the core gameplay loop is so addictive and good 300 plus hours in, and I'm still going back to it. Monster Hunter is another one that has a great loop. You prepare for the hunt, you go out on the hunt. It takes 10 to 20 minutes in my experience with Monster Hunter Rise. Then you're done. You Mm. go back re-equip get ready for the next one um it's it's real easy to let the hours pile up for yeah. sure yeah. absolutely i'll always say like the lack of story actually gives me kind of like the opposite where i've never been able to really get into these games mm. <laughs> interesting I, it's all about I, the hunt man so <laughs> it's, all the, it's all about the hunt yeah <laughs> yeah i i wish the story was better but i don't it, it is it is really it's like just all Super about basically. the hunt. I, I will say that this hunt is, or die. <laughs> yeah, this is a good game with if you have uh, friends too, and that also mm-hmm. helps getting through that. If That's you have true. friends oh, to yeah. hunt with, that definitely helps. I, yeah. I will say the gameplay is great. I just I can't stick with it for more than like maybe an hour or two. Mm-hmm. Well, next that brings us to Hopple via Twitter, uh, via Patreon. No, I said Twitter, uh, and they say Assassin's Creed Origins plus the DLC. That's right. It's worked there we out go. perfectly. That's, That's right. You right. Hopple. That's your soulmate right there. <laughs> yeah. That's your boy. Yeah. yeah. I talked about Assassin's Creed uh, Origins. I loved it. It was a great time. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. still playing through it, and the DLC stuff for Origins is crazy. I'm pretty sure I got Origins for free on like three separate platforms by this point. So <laughs> yeah. I maybe I'll give that a shot the next time mm-hmm. I'm I want that kind of game. You know. Yeah. Um. So Rick, uh, shout out to Rick from a uh, Pixel Project Radio podcast via Patreon. Uh, Persona Three, great story and presentation. Yeah. A, um, a good story can do a lot to get you through these games. Persona 3's strong point is definitely its story. I think its gameplay is a bit flawed, which I mean, but then again, 4 and 5 just improved significantly in that aspect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But 3's story is still to this day, like probably one of the better ones in the series. Right on. Games like this are interesting too, because I mean, it, you would hope that the games going forward built on the gameplay. So you're like, oh man, these are great, but it's just like, Having, like I said, having a good story and having that specific story for that title, it's just like you go back to it for the story, even if the gameplay is lacking with some of the, you know, quality of life things that their sequels had implemented. Mm-hmm. Well, that's like with Persona 3 Portable, like the gameplay yeah. from Persona 4 was so well received that they literally stuck it in Persona 3 Portable. <laughs> oh. Hmm. oh, man, to, be, to build upon that, too, uh, 
Sorry, I lost my spot there. There we go. Nick with uh, with Friday Night Gamecast via Patreon says The Witcher Three continued to reel me in deeper mm-hmm. with every line of dialogue and moment of soft world building. And that I don't know if you've ever played the first two Witcher games, but the first mm-hmm. one especially is super janky. The it's second one, two, Witcher Two, is great <laughs> though. I loved Witcher Two. Yeah, so yeah, but no, Witcher Three was that was that absolutely was super rewarding with every little tiny bit of exploration you did because there was just stuff everywhere yeah. little bits of lore and like werewolves and shit all over the place mm-hmm. oh, God. the writing and side quests like not necessarily like the main story kept me going all the time but the story of the side quests meant that like yeah. every time i was going through and found a side quest i knew it would be worthwhile to do it because it would tell me a cool little short story mm-hmm. um that was one that i had on my big list uh for long games that i loved but just didn't get to it so nick thanks for shouting it out dude I mean, the DLC too for Witcher 3, some of that as big, oh, man. it's not yeah. like bigger than some of the just like base game content, which is wild to think about. Yeah, it's a huge game. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got Tim uh, via Twitter. Uh, Tim says Persona 5, uh, again, back to the Persona series, visuals, music, okay. cast, and having a high quality turn-based JRPG uh, again. Um, I, I talked about this in the Persona 5 episode on Tales from the Backlog. Like turn-based combats kind of go in the way of the buffalo in JRPGs. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. to have a good turn-based system again, I uh, can't say enough about that. Tim also says he went back and played uh, 3 and 4 after finishing Persona 5. And that nice. is my plan as well, Tim. I agree. All right. <laughs> RIP 1 and 2. That's, that's my plan <laughs> yes. as well once I start playing 5. Yeah, once I quit my job and win the I lottery. Quit my job and leave my wife and I start playing five. F- five, yeah. five, <laughs> five soundtrack is like one of the greatest video game soundtracks. That's the one thing I have yeah. heard that, that I know it's about five. I heard the soundtrack and man, it is it is a bop. It's just yeah. great. Literally yep. two hours in, I went on eBay and bought the soundtrack. I liked it that much. You're like, mm-hmm. I'm in, I'm in. Uh, well, next up, we have Phil from Deleted Saves Podcast via Twitter, and he says, Fallout 3, so much to explore and do, and lots of time to do it all. Uh, that yeah. was my experience in Fallout 3. I think I haven't gone back to it, but when I first started playing Fallout 3, I didn't finish it because I just was exploring. I spent most of my mm-hmm. time exploring, yeah, and I, sp- I put so mm-hmm. much hours into it, and I never finished it. Yeah. Find it all those bobbleheads and those little boxes yeah. of yeah. Yeah. Mac and yeah. cheese and, and shit, dude. <laughs> like Phil says, lots of time to do it all. When that game came out, I was in college. I was skipping class all the time. I had all the time <laughs> in the world to play that game. Yeah. Nice. I'm not going to lie. I'm more of a fan of Fallout 1 and 2. Mm. Those I mean, are I good, like too. I enjoyed say, those. I just like the top-down design mm. more. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. 3 is very different compared to the first two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, so... uh. Uh, Dave from uh, Remember64 uh, via Twitter. Uh, retro, he said Banjo-Kazooie, and then oh, yeah. newer uh, Nobody Saves the World. Great humor and a variety of gameplay. Yeah. A variety about of gameplay. Nobody Saves the World. That's on Game Pass, too. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I find it interesting he said Banjo-Kazooie and not Tui, just because I thought Tui was like the more interesting game of the two, just from a design standpoint, but Kazooie did have a lot of like great like uh, yeah. exploration and stuff. I mean, because mm-hmm. I think Tui's better, but I think Kazooie has like a nostalgia place in my heart. That's like, true. even going back and playing it, I'm like, this is just great. This is a great time. Yeah. Love Banjo. It's on everything now. It's all, I guess they're. Oh, yeah. They're the rare replay version is the best, yeah. just because right. it's. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It, absolutely. It's, it's the uh, Xbox Live version, which is just better. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, man. Uh, then, yeah, then we got a novel, uh, sorry, a novel console podcast via Twitter Persona 5 Royal and Cyberpunk Persona 2077. 5. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Persona 5 Royal kept me in with the story and gameplay after about 125 hours. I feel like I had not spent enough time in the game. Yeah, that's hmm. another, yes, CD yeah. Projekt, they, I mean, once they fixed up Cyberpunk, they got, they got is open it, world on Is it fixed? I, I thought it was still I, broken. I think it's in a, oh, like no, a, a I've, I've heard it's great right now. now. Like, they yeah, had a, good, okay. a pretty good turnaround yeah. from it. I mean, I wouldn't say yeah. it's like No Man's Sky levels of, like, turnaround from their launch, but yeah. I've heard good things about Cyberpunk now at this point. Yeah. yeah. That game was doomed from the start because that game was way too overhyped. Yeah. I mean, when you have 10 years of development and so much hype and speculation for it, people were like all in. And then it's just like, at that point, it's never going to the hype. But it's, I mean, I, it's re- cyberpunk has redeemed itself now. It's, it's okay. you know, people say it's great. I can't wait to play it. Maybe uh, I'll finally play have, it. <laughs> next up, we have Tony PSR from Twitter. Uh, Tony says Elden Ring. 
a well-crafted open world game that never let up on having new things to discover. Uh, like I said, I've talked about Elden Ring so much on this podcast so now, but Tony, 100% agree. 100%. So excited. I haven't, I haven't started Elden Ring because I'm on my from soft journey of going through all of the <laughs> other games before that, but I'm excited mm-hmm. to play it when I get to that. Yep. Uh, but next on the list, we have Alejandro from a random gamer's corner. It says Monster Hunter Stories 2. Love the combat, exploration, and collecting monsters. Uh, this game has been on my radar for a while, both this and one. the second one, because I'm a big fan of Pokemon, and this is just Monster Hunter mixed with yeah. that. <laughs> yes. Hell yeah, dude. Me and uh, it's all the Pokemon fans like me and Jared. Like, yeah. <laughs> anytime someone makes a monster catching game, I'm like, are you doing something cool? Like, mm-hmm. I'll play it because I, I oh. obviously love this if you try yeah, something I, new because Pokemon won't. I almost yeah, put so. Yokai Watch 3 on this list. God damn it. I wanted to check out Yokai Watch. That's been one of my, <laughs> it's uh, so on my good. list I wanted to mm. check out. You can get the first one for like 10 bucks anywhere. Uh, so next we have Nave from a Gaming Together podcast. Uh, he said, Yakuza, insert number, much cure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, shout out to shout out to Nave, but um, I, I agree. The Yakuza series is so charming. Like, yeah. There's, they're like the goofiest like mafia games you will ever play. Mm-hmm. Like there's just something hilarious about a game where you can like literally like uh fight the mafia like the yakuza in like a back alley and then you can go play um like a uh, arcade game, like Sega arcade yeah. games in the store or go do karaoke. Yeah. You literally you you fucking curb stomp somebody and then go straight to playing Space Harrier 30 seconds later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of those too, it's goofy, but it also has like it have a compelling narrative to it mm. as well. Like it, it, yeah. it, it jumps between have being serious and goofy at the same time. There's yeah. just something funny about like running. You'll be like running down the street, and then like you'll just hear some guy like from an alleyway go, "Hey, it's that guy!" And then you'll just get into a street fight. You'll like <laughs> blow them with like a shotgun, and then they'll just like he'll be holding their stomach and be like, "Wow, you're really strong!" And then just run off. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that happened. <laughs> yeah, it's like Batman. He doesn't kill anybody. Never. Oh, yes. Speaking of Batman, uh, next one is Joshua via Twitter. These segues are beautiful. I Fallout love 3, it. he says. <laughs> yeah, another Fallout, Fallout 3, 3 reference. Again, yeah, another was... shout for Fallout 3. Right on. As long as it's not 4, I'm fine with it. Next up is Liv from Between Two Gamers uh, via Twitter. Liv says Death Stranding because it's relaxing and pretty. I could not agree more. I love Death Stranding. It's good to hear because I, I've definitely heard mixed reviews on Death Stranding. I haven't played it. And I've heard people say it's great. I've say it's boring walking sim. So I'm interested in checking it out myself. It is the most engaging walking mechanics in a game ever. Like when you when you look at it, all you're doing is, walk, yeah. all you're doing is walking. But walking is the game. And you yeah. can't really appreciate it until you play it, I think. Uh, your <laughs> mileage will vary with the story, though. The story is some yeah. fucking like c movie sci-fi bullshit but the movie yeah that's, that's kind of what i've seen just from like clips yeah. that i've seen of it i'm like it just seems like like you said yeah <laughs> C-movie but the, the gameplay is chef kiss it's great mm. Mm. i always say it's either like do you like Koji- kojima games or you do you not like kojima games that's basically all i ask people when do mm. will they like this game or not i'm like okay, that that's okay. This is basically Kojima if he had no chain, like no chains holding He's his back. Unhinged. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that, that product placement too is monster. Oh, the monster energy, monster yeah, the energy monster. survived the apocalypse, but you know nothing yeah. else has. Uh, next, we have uh, Rigney from Reliving Retro Podcast via Twitter, and they say Earthbound. Oh my Earthbound. gosh, Earthbound's got I, charm. It's got it, charm. It'll pull you through. Times, never gets old. I will say it's either though you you will either love it or you'll hate it. It's one of those games like okay. it's from gameplay perspective, it's very outdated, but I yeah, still loved right. it. I love the story. Fun. That's on that's on NSO now, right? They they added Earth yeah, to NSO. Okay. Yep. I'll yep. check it's, it out. It's, it's worth a play. Uh I, I will say like don't listen to like the overhype, but also don't listen to the hate. Like it's one of those games you really gotta right. truly experience for yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Agreed. Good. That's a good. That's a good mentality going in because my head's been like Earthbound is amazing because everyone's like dying for Earthbound and want more Earthbound yeah. and Mother and whatnot. So it's like okay, cool. Yep. Mm-hmm. But uh, then going from there, we get Tales from the Bridge podcast via Twitter. Final Fantasy Two has diversity. Huh. I have not played Final Fantasy Two. I have no I have idea. Not played Final Fantasy. Well, yeah. here's my here's my that's question. A, that's a rigid one. That's a real rigid game. Mm-hmm. I'm really confused because I'm not sure if he's talking about. Two or four here. <laughs> oh, that's right. Because numbers in Final Fantasy, yeah, yeah. they're different depending on where you are. Because I want to say, 
Because two. Two, two is like one of the most forgettable Final Fantasies in reality. So maybe they uh, mean Final before. Fantasy IV, which is one yeah. of those kind of one of the best Final ones. Fantasy. Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm confused. So that is our kind of listener correspondence on the long games that they loved. Now we're going to turn the tables and talk about some long games that we burned out on and we're not able to finish. Uh, so I'll get us started again uh, with just we've uh, we've covered Assassin's Creed. I've talked about that on the show before. Um, Dragon Quest XI is a game that I got I heard incredible reviews about and I was very excited about playing it. It's my first Dragon Quest game that I ever played, and it okay. it was a warm, you know, room temperature glass of water as a game. Uh, it was mechanically boring. The story was boring. I just burned out because I, I just felt like I was not getting engagement from the story or the mechanics of it in the least. That's a fair and, take. Um. I will say, like, you you said it's your first one. Yeah. I think that's 100% why. Because this mm. game, to me, is a game that was a love letter to longtime fans of the series. That's true. And, like, so what I was going to say next is mm-hmm. I've talked to, like, longtime Dragon Quest fans about it. And what I've gotten from them is that Dragon Quest is not a JRPG to mainline the way that I played Persona 5. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that... Most people like it as kind of like, you know, a little nighttime story before bed or play 30 minutes on the bus uh, on the way to work or something like that or to school. And that's not how I consumed it, Mm -hmm. uh, which may play into how I felt about it. But I still stand by like, I think the mechanics are not interesting in the least. And I didn't like the story. So that's See, fair. now I have much like for me. the opposite effect because this, this was on my list of of games that I fell off of. Uh, okay. I played Dragon Quest XI. It was my first one, and I fell in love with it. Like I loved cool. the visuals. The story was interesting. The and visuals I think are it was, good. Yeah, yeah. I know, it's it a pretty Philip game. On gaming together, was playing it, talking about it, and talking about how long it is and how much yeah. it like sets up for an ending, but then doesn't end, and then sets up for an ending and doesn't end. And hearing <laughs> him talk about it, I was yeah. like, I fell off. I was like, I'm in loving playing this, but I don't know if I can play this for that long and have that kind of ease of an ending all the time. So I, yeah. I ended up falling off playing it. That's that's and that's the thing too. Like, so that's a long game that I I played 35 hours of Dragon Quest 11. Didn't really mm-hmm. like it for most of that time. Uh, But burning out is another thing entirely. So the other thing I wrote down is Fallout New Vegas, which is a game I think is excellent. I love that game. It's just, Mm. I got tired of it. And it's like, Mm. I think it's because at this point in my life, I've played like 700 hours of big Bethesda RPGs and I'm just, I'm over it. I'm, I'm tired of checking containers. The, Mm -hmm. the writing in Fallout New Vegas is really good. And I liked the stories and the side quests and stuff. I'm just, I'm over the gameplay and yeah. it makes, I'm going to try Starfield cause I have game pass now. So like, why not? But yeah. I really wonder how much I'm going to like it. If it's next gen, you know, let me look mm-hmm. in this cave and loot all the containers and kill three monsters and then do mm-hmm. it all again. Yeah. I'm, I, I think I'm just over it now. Fallout New Vegas. Cause I love Fallout New Vegas, but it's just long. And I did fall off cause I didn't beat it, but I played a lot of Fallout New Vegas. But mm-hmm. what I really loved from Obsidian is the outer worlds. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. Worlds is the other worlds. One. Yeah. Uh, outer worlds was a good digest digestible experience, and I just got lost in the outer worlds. That game was so yeah. much fun. The OG uh, Fallout team. Yeah. Yep, yeah. There and you go. As opposed to Fallout New Vegas or Fallout Three, Outer Worlds is like a twenty-hour game, right? Yeah. Yeah. I would say yeah. if you if you liked New Vegas and it was too long and you haven't played Outer Worlds, play Outer Worlds because it's really good. Right on. Yeah, that's, that's appealing for sure. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the sweet ass I will wet. say I have like the opposite of opinion just because like I didn't care for three and New Vegas was like everything I wanted. So just yeah, that. I agree. I think that New Vegas is a much better game than three, much better Absolutely. writing, better storytelling. But 
by the time I got to replaying New Vegas, because I had it originally on the 360, mm-hmm. and my mm-hmm. 360 red ringed like halfway uh, through my playthrough, and I was like, I'm like not starting this game again. Red ringed so, at some point. <laughs> some uh, I different. picked it up like like two years ago and started mm. playing it again, and yeah, I just burned out. It's just I just think I'm over that kind of gameplay. So yeah. I'll turn it to you guys. What's a long game that you burned out on? So this is the the big the big one that I want to get out of the way. Uh, sorry, Liv. Uh, the Last of Us Part Two. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> I have the most complicated opinions on this game. Like there is. Mm. Um. So I will say, gameplay wise, phenomenal game. Mm-hmm. Um. I did not. I did not see any of the leaks when it came out, and I did not like mm-hmm. look at any of that con- the the quote unquote controversy that was happening around it. I didn't care yes. about that stuff. It was so stupid. I Gamers. I ignored it. I was I was like whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um. I played the game. I went in like blind, and something about this game's story, like this game, made me physically depressed to play. Yeah. And like I've heard any. That. Anytime I was playing it, like I'd get like a couple hours in, I'd be like, I I literally don't feel like good in the head i need to stop yeah. and it was like every time it would be the same thing like i'd be like okay i'm feeling okay and it's like no nope, no nope, still don't like it it's it's making me sad like i hate yeah. this like especially because yeah. the first i'm oh, sorry oh, uh, i was just gonna it. i was gonna say especially because the first game had such an uplifting like positive like out like feeling even though it was yeah, such a dark that. game this game is the exact opposite like this game literally made me like hate like the world at times i was yeah. like oh, this God. is rough i didn't even yeah. think about off a game for those kind of reasons because also this game came out like right when COVID hit right where like yeah. lockdown was happening and I was the same way I mean I played through it and finished it but there was times playing this game where I was like I don't feel good playing this game I'm, no. I'm legitimately being sad right now and I'm already sad because I'm really? locked in my house because there's this virus that's ravaging the world so it's just like I'm already feeling emotions in the first place but I didn't even think about that that's totally a valid reason of on off of a game because if it's like this game's not making me feel happy. Then why do I why do I want to play it? What's yeah. sad too is the writing is so good. Like it's like yeah. top notch Naughty Dog so stuff. Good. It's just I I just I didn't like the the negative like the dark like negative like at- atmosphere to it. It just mm-hmm. I don't know. It yeah, turned me off to the game. That. I don't know. That's fair. Understandable. There's a certain like benefit to having a game not just be the heaviest or most intense shit all the time especially for a game like i i haven't played the last of us part two so please don't spoil um but i, I just looked up how long it takes to play it's twice as long as the first game mm-hmm. and when you have a game that is all intense or the heaviest depressing story all the time it can be and exhausting that's what this is too it's just constant it's constant yeah. depression and it's constantly sad things happening it doesn't let let, let up so any like you have uplifting to- I, oh, sorry i was gonna say any uplifting moment you get immediately gets like trounced into the ground five minutes later it's like it's like jesus yeah like i was i was thinking um some of the other games that we talked about you know elden ring is not a happy game but there are funny moments in there like from software has a big sense of humor that i love about them um Mm -hmm. a lot of the other stuff we we talked about persona 5 is a lighthearted game in a lot of ways with some Uh, very dark themes (laughs) yeah dark themes and sometimes you're dealing with dark subject matter but it's not depressing for 120 hours you know yes and i talked about this on the resident evil 4 episode uh with michael mays that resident evil 4 is like 15 hours long and i feel like it's like five hours too long because it's constant (laughs) stress and combat all the time and it it's exhausting in a way even though i love that game and i think it's incredible like it's when you don't have those like releases or happy moments that are sustained for any period of time like you're describing the last of us part two it's exhausting Mm -hmm. i can see how you would stop playing especially because i just it's i looked it up like over 30 hours for Mm -hmm. uh, how long to beat says main and sides for Imagine 30 being hours sad for 30 hours oh, that's the i'm game. sad for 30 hours in my real life i don't need that in my video <laughs> games <laughs> especially oh, when it man. came out and how the world was at the time like that's yeah. what i'm saying oh, i played it at launch and i'm shout, like i'm Bill. just sad guys i'm just yeah. sad um okay I'll, I'll go next i have i'll do two here one really quick because we we're talking about fallout but fallout 4 i mm. was really excited for four when it like leading up to it because i loved three i love new vegas um starting i didn't really love the story of four and then just the game mechanically was janky where like 
I don't know how long I put into it, maybe 25 hours or so, but like, I, I kind of just fell off because the whole, I was really excited for like the um, settlement building kind of thing yeah. aspect of it. I just fell off. I, it felt janky to me. And I just was like, I was like, okay, fall out for I'm, I'm, I'm done. That's, I'm going to wipe my hands. And it was more of the same too. It, to me, it felt like it was more of the same exact formula as three in new Vegas, but with a shiny new coat of paint and, and, yeah, and, and less, settlements. less RPG. <laughs> it was yeah, less, less RPG, <laughs> shiny paint. In a, a system that didn't work really well, it has uh, it has real colors. I'll give it that. It's not it's not green <laughs> and it's not brown, but and it has real colors. But yeah, it's it's like I said, it's it's why I'm kind of nervous about Starfield. Not yeah. that it's going to be a bad game. Just me personally, if it's the same gameplay loop as previous Bethesda RPGs, I'm going to get tired of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the other one I had here is fell off for a different reason. I haven't played it in a very long time, but difficulty was Final Fantasy 13. I um, am actually one of the yeah. people that enjoyed Final Fantasy 13 for what it was. Yes, it is a, a bunch of hallways that you walk through, but I liked the story. The characters were fairly interesting, but I don't even remember what boss I got to, but there was just a boss that I, I couldn't get through. They were just beating me down over and over and over again, and I fell off playing it. And I was, was just sad, a bummer, because I liked playing the game. Was it the old guy on the bridge or something like that? That's was the one the I was the old guy on the bridge. You will like a lot of memory on the for it just now. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh my gosh. I will say, though, I recommend 22. you trying to get through it again just because 13.2 is so good. That's what I've heard. I've heard that the, the kind of sequels for 13 are really good. Mm. I fell off of 13 because I hated all the characters and I didn't <laughs> care about the story. <laughs> What you don't love uh, lightning? Lightning's great. You no. can see their vehicle forms, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, I can watch Transformers if I want that. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. It's, uh, I will um, say yeah. 13 2 fixes a lot of it, I will say. Fair enough. Right, cool. Fair enough. I, I do want to go back and play through 13 because, like I said, it's been at least like 10 years since I played through it. So I do want to go back and actually play through 13 and, and its sequels. But for, a, for my pick for Burnout, I. At first, I had Xenoblade three, but but Dave already knows how I feel about it. It's just it's mm-hmm. not as good as the first three in the series, uh, including X. It's not as good as the other first three. But mm-hmm. um, my my actual pick, I feel left out because you guys picked like big AAA games. I put I put Bug Fables because I just so yeah. stuff. Okay, I'm interested because oh, um, I, I like that okay, game. I'm interested to hear this take because I haven't played it, but I've been interested in it. So it's it's a great game. Everything looks awesome. The music is great. I love the main characters, especially Leif or Leaf, however you say it. Kabu wow. is awesome. They're all great. Um, when I first started the game, I decided to play it on hard mode because they were like, "You you get extra rewards and XP and XP." And I was like, "I can I can totally do this. It's a paper game." But nope, <laughs> it's actually pretty hard, and they're super stingy with the items and oh, covering man. TP and HP. And I just got so burned out on the like. Um, the, the the moth zombie boss in some lab somewhere. I did, I couldn't beat it. I just got pissed off and I refused to take it off hard mode. God damn, I'm not doing that. Don't even, <laughs> don't even try to add me anywhere. I'm not doing it. Um, cool. So now yeah. I know when I play it, put it on easy mode and then I will yeah. enjoy the game. It's, so, yeah, it's it like... It look easy, but it's not on hard mode. Yeah, you might, you might look at that game and think like, Paper Mario is easy. I'll just play this on hard. It, don't do it because this game is not easy. Mm. Um... I burned out on Bug Fables 2, and this is a telltale sign I gotta stop playing a game. I could not stay awake <laughs> playing it. I would consistently up. fall asleep when I was playing it. And like not like sometimes I play Switch games right before bed, because like yeah. if I play a a JRPG or a Disco Elysium was another one. You know, read a bunch, take in some story, yeah. get tired. Stuff Ooh, this was not one of those games. I'd be like on the couch at like 1 30 PM falling asleep. <laughs> and it was like, time to put this down. That's wild. Yeah. Interesting. I do, I do think that game was trying really hard to fill a niche that was like that was missing in a lot of fans like for mm-hmm. a long time. People which were it like, did I a- want Thousand Year Door and you're like, well, here's Bug Fables. Have fun. With it, yeah. it, do- it doesn't help too that then they put out Origami King, which was really good. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Right. And now we have there's another one coming out called like the Outbound Ghost or something like that. Another uh, game, oh, yeah. Paper That's Mario. Already out. Now on Steam. Is it out? Yeah, it's all I actually yeah, got yeah, the I, physical version of it. It, I think they're shipping this month. I got it for PS5, but I've been following the development of this game, and it looks, it looks so cool. It looks really fun. Yeah, it does. It does look cool. Bug Fables kind of made me second guess how much I actually want a Paper Mario <laughs> spiritual successor, but it does look cool for sure. Yeah, um, I got one more. I actually wanted to talk about if that's okay. This one's really quick, but um, Super Mario Sunshine. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Love> sunshine. <laughs> so. 
if you play this game normally and you just get the the amount of shines that you need, it's perfectly fine. Trying to 100% this game is the most frustrating like thing you'll ever do in your life. It's, yeah, and it, 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 it and li- you literally get nothing for it. You get a if postcard. You- that's it. Damn it. You get a shiny postcard, though. Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me trying to 100% a game. Um, <laughs> I, I avoid all those frustrations because I don't 100% shit. Actually, you know, I talked a lot of shit about Bethesda. The last game I 100%ed was Oblivion. But again, like I said, I was in college. I wasn't going to class very often. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of time, you know. <laughs> you know what? Me too. I got I got the whole thousand or whatever gamer score from getting every achievement in Oblivion. Or no. No, yeah, you said Oblivion, right? Or Morrowind? Yep, Oblivion. Oh, okay, yeah, ob- yeah, Oblivion. Yep. My God, yep. that was a that was a pre- that was like three hundred hours of uh, of game there. That's that's a and lot. torture. Yeah, <laughs> platinum <laughs> Astro's Playroom. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Uh, that's that's the way to do it. You platinum those like two hour games. That's the yeah, way exactly. To go. <laughs> Sponge, SpongeBob SquarePants <laughs> Battle for Bikini <laughs> Bottom Reshined. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't even try. Just happened. <laughs> So we got a lot of uh, correspondence from people talking about games that they loved all the way to the end. I also asked those people, give me an example of a game you burned out on long before Mm -hmm. finishing. So going through those same people, uh, Jake via Patreon uh, says The Witcher 3 burned out on The Witcher 3. He said the gameplay got old long before the game was going to end. Um, And Jake earlier had said that Elden Ring was the one he loved till the end. So it's not about open worlds in -hmm. particular um, that the gameplay, you know, a lot of people hate the gameplay in The Witcher 3 or say that it gets old. I'm not going to argue. I don't think it's great, but I didn't have an issue with it. I had a good time with it. Um, definitely not the strongest part of the game. I will admit that. I, I was going to say, I think the story helped push me along more than anything yeah. in the world building, at least being fairly interesting where the, the gameplay was kind of like a, a nice second for that. But you're right. The gameplay isn't the, the, the best when it comes yeah. to that game. Uh, but no, next we have Adam via uh, Patreon. And he says Bethesda games. We talked about yep. a lot of Bethesda yep. games. We've, <laughs> we we've fell been off through of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Adam, yeah. thank you. Handshake, Adam. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then following that, we get Moonborn via Patreon. Uh, he says, won't make it far in a game with mon- mon- monotonous or bad gameplay. I mean, fair. Yeah. Yep. That's, yeah. Yeah. We can't. I mean, these are, these are video games. We can't argue that, you know, if you're not engaged with the gameplay, the story has got to be a plus if the gameplay yeah, if, sucks. If, you're, if your gameplay is like bad, which a lot of the gameplay, you're probably going to be experiencing that. If you have a story that can carry it, then it has to be like. I mean, oh, we, no. we live in the air. We live in the era of walking simulators, where like the story really is all that the, the game is. So. I was just gonna say though, the other thing, the thing that can get you through those is that walking simulators are usually like two hours or less. That that's yeah. fair. That's so, the, uh, if if we have a we have a seventy hour game that has shit gameplay, I'm probably not gonna make it to the end. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's the, yeah. They usually applied to the uh, those older like Silent Hills and shit like that, where the gameplay mm. was kind of wonky, but the stories were actually like, mm. they, they really kept you guessing. Yeah. Stories are great. And Silent Hill two is like eight hours long. So speaking of, uh, of the Witcher three, like you said earlier, uh, Chris and be a Patreon. He comes at us again with the Witcher three, which yeah. Um, I'm it, Witcher three. I well, I would say I'm surprised by the amount of people that say the Witcher three, but again, it's a giant open world game. Yep. We've already said the gameplay is not the best part of the game. I get it. Next up, Eric unlockables podcast again via Patreon. Eric says red dead redemption two. Uh, he still thinks it's a great game, but he packed, it packed so much cowboy stuff in such a short <laughs> amount of time, <laughs> cowboy overdose that I think I burned myself out on it. Ever since then, I've learned to enjoy things at a slower pace. And I had red dead two on my games. I loved to the end list. Uh, but it is for sure a shock because it's yeah. much slower and meth- more methodical than red dead one yeah, uh, or yeah. any grand theft auto game. It, it's 100%. really a shock to your system. You got to get into its rhythm. I also had red dead two on my, my list. And I, I, my story with red dead two is that I played the first half and just, I was not enjoying it. It was so slow. I mm-hmm. didn't enjoy the combat. The story wasn't getting me fell off. Of it came back. And I was like, you know what? Let me finish this. Played the end half. Loved it. Such yeah. a good ending, such a cool experience. So that's why mm-hmm. I was like, red dead two was definitely worth it, but I can definitely see why people fall off of that game. Yep. 
man, I should have gotten that Tommy was- on this. He he loves Red Dead 2, and he has just the goofiest fucking stories of his experience <laughs> with Red Dead 2. Like <laughs> uh when he uh he he would say um what was it? He he had a lot of the songs from Red Dead 2 on his own personal playlist on something, and he would just walk uh-huh. around you know, with a yeah, playing. That's, that's yeah, awesome. Cool cowboy. Real life western. <laughs> that was that was really one of those games that kind of just it like appeared, was huge, and then it just gone. Like yep. in a flash. <laughs> well, Absolutely. people I'm still extolling its virtues at every chance I get, because I think that game's incredible. I can't oh, wait I to say you should play it. You should play it till the end because the, the, the ending of Red Dead 2 is so worth it. It's so good. Oh yeah, it's great. I I beat it. It that's one of those ones where like I agree the gameplay is slow. The gunfighting is not great. I don't like it that much, but the story is incredible. It's one mm. of the best game stories I've ever experienced and it totally carried me. I still can't believe that was Rockstar's only game they made during that generation though. It's ridiculous. And then that is there. Crazy. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's right. Uh, next, we have Hopple again via Patreon. Apple. Uh, and they say Assassin's Creed Odyssey map was too huge. And uh, when I was starting um, Origins, looking into some of the newer ones, looking at Odyssey and seeing less of the Assassin's Creediness that the, the franchise was known, more, known for and more of the open world RPG mm-hmm. the side of it. And that that does turn me off a little bit to it. Like, yep. I think there's a limit to like having a big map is nice but like there's there's too big like if your map's massive you're just like okay yeah that game was on my list of uh, long games that i burned out on it's repetitive the map is boring and i thought every character that talked i didn't care what they said except for cassandra <laughs> cassandra's mm-hmm. great i didn't give a shit about what anyone else was saying <laughs> so that that game suffered from like one of the key things i think open world games suffer from yeah, your map is gr- is huge and that's cool, but if you put nothing in it and it's boring, like it, it's it's pointless. Like, yep. That's how I feel about uh, well, like Just Cause Four, or the Just Cause mm-hmm. Three and Four games. I feel like they have an open world that has like really nothing in it, but it's just fun to be in those games. The goofy, yeah. weird humor of having grappling hook things and shooting people together yeah. and jetpacks just makes that game so fun. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyways, moving on to a uh, Rick from a. Uh, Pixel Project Radio podcast via Patreon. Uh, he said, Bravely Default 2. Uh, Bravely Default 2 plays better than Persona 3, but is really safe, traditional, and boring in writing and presentation. Not sure I agree with him on that final point, but he does bring... I, I mean, I do agree next to Persona 3. It's definitely not as flashy, Yeah, I will say. Yeah, so like, yeah. If, if we remember, Rick said Persona 3 was the long game that he loved till the end. Mm. So obviously Rick places a big emphasis on story, writing, and presentation. Yeah. See, that's where I disagree, though, because I thought Perso- I thought Bravely Default 2 story was really fun for what it was. No, fair enough. I haven't played either game, so I that's can fair. neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I respect your opinion, Rick, but I love Bravely Default 2. Um... <laughs> Yeah, the, the next one, Nick from Friday Night Gamecast via Patreon. Sorry, via Patreon. Assassin's Creed Origins, bloat and lifeless writing. Yeah. I don't disagree with you, Nick. The writing's not yeah. great. The story's the not great. The writing's but not man, great. Is that game fun to explore. But there's camels. Oh, there's camels. 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 How could you put that on the back of the box? Have camels. Yeah, there are put camels. There. A big old joke camel. Yeah. Speaking of camels, Tim via Twitter uh, writes in Dying Light 2, a recent game. Uh, saying he had no one to play with and a lack oh, of guns. Um, hopefully in the game, a lack of guns. Uh, we'll try to finish it eventually, but right. it, it's one of those that like, you know, open world games, I feel like once you put them down, unless it's a rare case like Jared talked about with Red Dead 2, once you put it down, you're not going back. I think it's really hard to jump back into it. It's really hard to motivate yourself to jump back into the world when you've already been like burnt, but like this is not fun. Yeah. Oh, that's me next. I was like, what's this next? Uh, Phil from Deleted Saves Podcast via Twitter says, Elden Ring, lots to do, but no time. Yeah. And that's fair. And that's, that's another thing too, like especially with big open world games or maybe a long JRPG. If mm-hmm. you set it down because you don't have time to play for a couple weeks and then you pick it back up when you have time and you're like, where am I? What was I doing? You know, especially old JRPGs are real rough for this. Unless you like saved your spot in a guide or something, you're like, mm-hmm. I don't know where I'm supposed to be going right now, who I'm supposed to be looking for. Oh, that's the worst. You jump back in and you're like, I don't know what's what's happening. Right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. How do I play this game again? What are the controls? Yeah. Uh, but anyways, next uh, we get once again, Dave from Retro 64 Podcast via Twitter. 
Oh, Dave, we're going to have to talk after this. Um, <laughs> You're going to have to uh, talk right. about Miles have an opinion. Uh, retro, he said uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, and newer, he said Ghost of Tsushima. Just got tired of them. Mm-hmm. I respect your opinion, Dave, but I disagree heavily on both. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima was so good. I loved it. I loved it. I loved Ghost it. of Tsushima is one of my favorite games of that generation. It, it's so real good. I, I really That was an early Tales from the Backlog episode. Um, I really mm-hmm. enjoyed it. It I burned out on Final Fantasy Tactics as well, that's, even though I think fair. that game's incredible. Uh, I just... I hit a boss fight that was like a huge difficulty spike. And I was like, I think I'm done. I get it. That's what I was going to ask. Cause I've been eyeballing this game to play cause I'd never played it. And I didn't know if it was like length or if it was like a difficulty thing that came up. It's, it's, um, it's not the longest game. I don't okay. think, but it is, I think I thought I was doing a good job building out my team. And apparently mm. I wasn't. It's one of those tactical games where you really have to be paying attention to what you're doing. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. It's not as forgiving as Fire Emblem is. Mm, okay. Yeah. I will say it's definitely aged, but I, I think it's it's one of the classic Final Fantasies of that era. Yeah. Mm. Like I said, I, I still think it's a really good game. I just got I just hit that point and I was like, I get it. I'm I'm yeah. moving on. I I like how uh, ballsy his response was though. <laughs> That's like those are two like acclaimed games, right? There. Right. Yeah. We've got, I mean, people saying they burned out on The Witcher 3, Elden True, Ring, yeah. a lot of, lots of acclaimed games, game. games here. Yeah, Red yeah. Dead 2. <laughs> Red Dead 2, yeah. Uh, so yeah, a novel podcast, or a novel console podcast via Twitter, sorry. Assassin's Creed Valhalla only had gameplay carrying it. Lack of variety in mission structures really made it a slog at times. But after 60 plus hours, that's a hell of a lot of hours to just... And 60 hours not even being like close to finishing that game yeah. either, yeah. I feel like. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's... Uh, I've heard it's a lot of... I've heard that about Valhalla quite a bit. That's why I'm really excited for kind of the series, at least partially, to go back to its roots. You know, the... Um, I'm blanking at the, the name of it. But the one that's supposed to take place in Baghdad is supposed to be more of like traditional Assassin's Creed. And then the open world one is supposed to take place mm-hmm. in like uh japan samurai yeah. japan and everything like that so that's oh, that would be really cool oh, sweet that's what, so, that's what so, people have been asking for for a long Assassin's time Creed samurais we're finally here guys we so, made it. so go ghost of tushima <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, i mean that is uh that is ghost of tsushima for the most right. part speaking of samurais we have tony psr via twitter with mafia 3 uh, a lazily designed yeah. open world game that was padded out to a mind numbing degree. I didn't play that, but I have heard a lot of people say it. I sucks. liked the you story nailed that segue. Three, that was though. a sweet segue. Yeah, that's that, that super pod saga magic right there. <laughs> As it is, I'm rubbing off on you. I, I will. I will admit that the the world open world isn't the best open world in Mafia Three, but I really enjoyed the story of Mafia Three. Mm, I've heard the stories are good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next, we have Alejandro. Um, a random gamers corner podcast says red dead redemption 2 felt too realistic more real life than game at some points that's fair fair. it's it's fair and you can fish for a long time in that game you can eat so many cans of beans yeah (laughs) so many cans of beans that was uh that was for me that kind of slowed down cowboy role-playing thing that was extremely my shit once i got into it but i will not tell anyone they're wrong if they didn't like it you know look i yeah. just wanted to hogtie old ladies at train tracks that's all i wanted to do <laughs> you're a simple man jared i'm a, simp- I'm a simple man that's all i want <laughs> i just ex- liked exploring on my horse yeah that too that too it's a beautiful game yeah yeah but uh anyway speaking of horses uh nave from the gaming and <laughs> together gaming together podcast he said tales of a- tales of arise not enough kiru <laughs> not enough cure you yeah imagine if they sense. put him in tales of the rise uh, tales of a rise though wouldn't that be wild that would be put him in super monkey ball i mean why wouldn't they, they put did. him in that That's they true. put him in a monkey Indian ball super monkey yeah, ball. yeah he's in super <laughs> ball. so tales of a rise is an interesting one because i think it's actually the most accessible tales game that's ever been made mm-hmm. but it kind of killed the whole the biggest draw of the tales series by getting rid of the multiplayer hmm Oh, I Which, didn't realize there was like their multiplayer too. I I played the the demo for it and actually really enjoyed the combat. But from hearing Nave talk about it, the story goes to some wild places in Tales yeah. of Arise. <laughs> so my favorite in the series is like Tales of the Abyss, which was the mm. the PS2 one, and, and three yes, yeah, that is true. But uh, one of my favorite uh, favorite things about those games is you can play like four player like multi uh, multiplayer co op during uh, combat. Mm. So like while you're playing, one player plays around during the. Uh, the com the the actual like RPG exploration segments. When you go to combat, you can have like four players on screen at once, which is really uh, yeah. fun for the time. Yeah, 
That's one of those JRPG series where like I haven't played any of them and there's like 17 of them and I'm like, I'm just not going to. I can't. It's yeah. some also, series just, just there's no time. Like a, a large series of a game, like that's not, I can't get through all of these. I, yeah, I've, yeah, for I've sure. noticed with the uh, the Tales series, a lot of people have their one entry that they really adore and they just mm-hmm. don't care for the rest of the series. Like for me, I've played all of them, but uh, Abyss is like the one that I can go back to at like any time mm. and just nice, oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Oh man. So speaking of, speaking of cans of beans. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I, I didn't mean to cut you off there. I apologize. Man. No, it's okay, man. Go like. ahead. Uh, Joshua via Twitter. Fallout 4 because Todd Howard played Terraria after making Fallout 3. Yes, uh, Joshua. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for validating my Fallout 4 opinion. I, I thought, and I thought this was a joke, uh, which is very funny because the, the settlement building in Fallout 4 is poison. I will not play that game because I, <laughs> I don't want to build a settlement. I want to play Fallout. Um <laughs> I thought this was a joke. Yeah. Apparently it's not. Like there's an interview with Todd Howard oh, where he this says is actually like, a thing. Yeah, that he says this is this is actually a thing. So he's a he is a weird dude when you look into him. Like he has yeah. some <laughs> odd feelings about things. Also, this nice. this was the, the beginning of the era of Bethesda where they were like, the glitches are a gameplay thing. It's fun. And it's like, no, we don't yeah, like it. Was that. Like, it worked, it worked for Skyrim. Okay, sure. But the rest of them eventually you're just like, Are you just, just not doing this on purpose? Is it just an excuse at some point? Yeah, horses are supposed to go up mountains. What the fuck do you mean? Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. What yeah. you mean? You're not supposed to launch three nukes at once and break the game? Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of out of bounds horses, next up we have yes. Liv from Between Two Gamers podcast via Twitter. Uh, Liv says Dying Light Two again, another one for Dying Light Two. Mm-hmm. Open world games are hit or miss for me. A ton of repetitive quests and challenges contribute to burnout. Bigger doesn't mean better. And it's especially uh, important with Dying Light 2 because that's the one where they're bragging about how long the game is before it came out. So oh, I remember that. They're like 500 yeah, plus hours that. of content. We're like, no, yeah, I was that's like, not, no. <laughs> much? No, one's, doing? no one's going to finish your game. No. How much did you say? How many hours? I, like 200 successive for an RPG and this isn't an RPG. <laughs> yeah, they said... 200 uh, hours? They No, they bragged oh. that there's... They put out a thing on Twitter saying like, you can play this game for up to 500 hours and everyone was like, we don't want that. Stop it. We're like, read the room, guys. Yeah, exactly. Clearly nobody wants that. The shakes, like the chills. (laughs) Yeah, very uncomfortable thinking about it. (laughs) Uh, Speaking of things giving me the chills, Rigney from (laughs) Reliving Retro Podcasts uh, via Twitter says, every Zelda game, I want to love them, I want to beat them, but there's always a point where I don't care anymore. And I would would love to hear when that point is because I'm curious. <laughs> to be honest, I, yeah. with a lot of the games, I feel like it could be a different point. Yeah. I, I yeah, mean, I know true. Majora's Mask, a lot of people, they get like five minutes in, they're like, I don't get it, and they quit. <laughs> Your Wind Waker with the with the with the boat bullshit, having a boat across the world, that sucked. Mm-hmm. Or the uh the Triforce quest in Wind Waker is a pain in the mm-hmm. ass too. So I can see, but people falling mm-hmm. off that that point. They or the mo- they the motion all- controls and stuff. Oh sorry. <laughs> It's okay. They also started to make Zelda games like pretty long at some point. Like uh, yeah, I, Twilight I Princess is not Twilight a Princess short is, game. It's long. I played um, Skyward Sword on Wii, and the year I played that, I also played Red Dead Redemption Two. I put in the same amount of hours in Red Dead Two that I did in Skyward Sword, and there's not a lot of exploration in Skyward Sword. It's fairly yeah, that linear. Is, yeah. That is an That's insane amount of time insane. for a Zelda oh, game. Fifty in my hours opinion. for a Zelda game. I'm like, bro, no, Jesus it's a lot. <laughs> But speaking of a lot, um, Tales from the Bridge podcast via Twitter, he said Contra, awesome but very repetitive. Yeah, well, that's, I, that's I mean, yeah, I guess <laughs> that's oh what it is. is oh, we got a cat oh, sighting. Yeah, yeah there's a cat in here. Oh, <laughs> kitty. Listeners, you can't see, but there's an adorable cat that just walked into the frame over there with Aaron. So that is all of our correspondence for people. I uh, thank you everybody for writing in. I uh, thank you, uh, especially to the patrons of the tube. I love you very much. You're my heroes, but everyone who wrote in on Twitter too, thank you very much. We appreciate your input in kind of helping us work our way through this discussion here. Uh, talking about long games that we love till the end and games that we burned out on long before we got there. Uh, maybe that maybe they're repetitive, Maybe the gameplay is boring. Maybe there's not enough Kiryu, like Nave said. <laughs> Lots of reasons that contribute to burnout in video games. Uh, so I just went, before we finish, just kind of hammer down a couple of like themes that we notice in the answers. So I just said for games that we burn out on, a lot of them 
are repetitive or have challenges or quests that are boring yeah. or use the same structure over and over again. Mm. Um, you know, I was thinking about that with, re with respect to like the Assassin's Creed games, like Odyssey and the Witcher three have similar quest structures. They're always like, go here, kill this thing or in Assassin's mm. Creed, it's go here, kill this person or steal this thing from the, the fort or whatever. The difference was in the Witcher three, for me, the quests were interesting and they all had like cool twists and they'd say like, I need you to go here and kill this monster. And you're like, okay, I'll go there and kill this monster. But when you get there, there's like a story twist to what's yeah. going on um, that you weren't expecting. And it keeps things fresh, even though at the end of the day, most of those quests are go here, kill this. So it helps you. <laughs> uh, we got great cat content going on right now. Sorry <laughs> for everyone who's not here watching it. Um, it helps Missing you out. get through those. Uh, so even if you have a game that's kind of repetitive in quest structure or uh, gameplay is not the best, I, I think that mm -hmm. a really compelling story is something that can carry you, um, especially in that example of The Witcher 3. Red Dead Redemption 2 had this too, especially when it's not the long main quest story. It's those little yeah. bite-sized short stories that you get into around the world. I really like that. Um, I think that carries me quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Another thing I guess that we kind of hit on in those games that people play till the end is a satisfying gameplay loop that doesn't take too long, mm. that makes yeah. you feel like you are accomplishing something every time you play. And if you play for 15 or 20 minutes, you get one of one or two of those loops in, you feel good. If you play for three hours, you get 30 of those loops in, you feel pretty good. Uh, and it just keeps sustaining you for that time. It's why Fire Emblem and Persona 5 really just like just devoured my my time mm. we, we also talked about how like when you play a game just irl like what life stuff is going on also can contribute yeah. to it mm. you know 100%. with me I, I really enjoyed assassin's creed origins because i was ready for an open world game i'd been burned out for so long it took a, such a long break that i was ready for something open world and this was a great open world thing in my opinion to come back into so a lot of just like life stuff what you're playing what's going on what's happening in life also can contribute to whether or not a game hooks you or not yeah like a, another aspect too like um i brought up kind of with persona and then with the last of us is like the tone of a game yeah. can really like affect your <laughs> like how much you're gonna play because Persona 4 Golden is like one of the most uplifting murder mysteries you will ever play. <laughs> I always I always say, but then like Last of Us Part 2 is it is a very dark and like deep game that is almost the polar opposite of positive in a lot of ways. Yeah. I think Which, with that it's not just sad, it's just like real. It's real. Sad. Yeah. I think with yeah. like the the characters being realistic and and them doing a good job of making those characters feel real. Like, it feels like real world sad stuff. Like, this is stuff that could happen to real people. And you're like, this like, is mm -hmm. not good. The writing yeah. is so, so good that it, like, I don't like it. It's one of those <laughs> things. <laughs> it's too, yeah. too close. Yeah. I, I was saying earlier, like, a lot of games that I really like that have extremely heavy, like, fuck me up stories are less than 10 hours long. And yeah. you get that, like, hit of those extremely, you know, just rough situations to watch play out, but it's over before you get like, okay, this is affecting my real life mood now, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, like, I, and even if it's fun and kind of lighthearted, like resident evil four is not a serious game. It's a, yeah. it's, it's more comedy than horror at times, but it's, it's super stressful because you're in combat all the time in that game. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if that game were, if that game were 30 hours long, I'd be like, what are they thinking? Um, I even think it's too long at 15 hours just because mm -hmm. of that. So that that tone is a really good point. And I wonder if we scroll through the games that people mentioned up here, like Yakuza, goofy as fuck series. Mm -hmm. You know, you can play those forever. Those games are hilarious. Um, I'm sure that cyberpunk has a sense of humor about it, even though cyberpunk as a genre is like just dealing with depressing, like capitalist forces all the time, you know? Um, yeah. Persona, Banjo Kazooie, Fallout. Fallout games have a sense of humor. Yeah, a lot. Of, a lot of us go to games not all the time, but for a sense of escapism. 
And mm-hmm. sometimes, yep. as my co-host Ben calls it, he wants a sad boy game. He wants a game that's going to hit too. him right in the feels. Yep. Um, but escapism is a big thing. And if you're looking for escapism and your game is bringing real world issues into your life, you're just like, I don't need that right now. That's mm. not what I'm looking for. Yeah. And again, it's like, I'm with Ben. Like, I love a game that really fucks me up emotionally, but I'm not sure that I want that for 30 to 40 hours. Like, give that to me in <laughs> five to 10 hours. Let me yeah. take it all in and then move on with my life. Can you imagine coming home from work and playing like <laughs> 30 minutes of The Last of Us Part Two and just having it fuck up your day for like two straight months? Oh, like, man. That's what I did. And I, that's how it was. <laughs> that was yeah, my life. That's what I was doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm excited to play that game, but I am like, I have heard people say that it's like, man, it's the heaviest game. I'm really curious to hear your opinions, especially knowing that you're a set like Sad Boy Games really I curious do. to yeah. hear uh your opinions on it yeah i've noticed with last of us part two you either like it or you hate it it's one of those mm-hmm. kind of games although yeah. the, the reasons for liking it and hating it i've noticed have been different yeah so mm-hmm. it's it's a very complicated game yeah i'm i'm trusting a lot of people whose like video game opinions i trust uh that i will like it um it is it does seem like my kind of game it's just like when i look at how long it is i'm like whoo that is that is it pretty is long. long for a Last of Us game. It's a game that feels weird to say you're enjoying it. Like I'm enjoying this game. Should I <laughs> yeah. be? Should having I be enjoying this? I'm having a lot of fun, but should I be? Yeah. Oh, like Have the it. the combat and gameplay is super fun, but my like, yeah. God, I hated everything about it. Yeah, <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> those you're things. you're doing this awesome combat while someone is like screaming the the name of their friend that you just brutally killed. That's a big one. That's a big yeah. one. Yeah. Damn. You had to go into that with the, with the breakup kit, full tub of ice cream and bonbons. Yo, and- oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything else uh, that we, we think are keys for a uh, really long games kind of sustaining us all the way through? I think like we said, like the lack of repetition is like probably like one of the key things. Mm-hmm. It's like or- a combination of a lack of repetition with an engaging story and just a fun core gameplay. Or like we said with The Witcher... Or with Ghost of Tsushima too, uh, mm. do something to cover up maybe yeah. some of that repetition. The Witcher has great story flavor. Ghost of Tsushima is incredible to look at. Yeah. So even if I'm riding off to another camp to clear out another camp, it's a beautiful game. Right. I never got tired of just like taking in the scenery, you know? Yeah. I also think that, like you were saying, Dave, a lot of people will try to mainline games Take your time. You know, there's a lot that if you have the time, if you're like, man, I only have like 20, 30 minutes to play games, just play a little bit of it. I had yeah. just recently beat um, the last couple of months, Kena, Bridge of Spirits. That game's not relatively long, but I bought it at like launch and it took me like 11 months to beat just because I was just, <laughs> I, anytime I had free time, I would just pick away a little bit here and there. Yeah. And I left the game loving the experience. Same thing with Ghost of Tsushima. I, I picked away at the game with like within 10 months to a year or so. And if a game seems too long, just take it in little bits as much as you can when you can another like thing too is like if you're gonna like mainline like long games take a break in between because like i I, like personal example like the ace attorney series i binged the first five of those in like a week oh no (laughs) it i loved them but my god i didn't want to play ace attorney for like a year after that (laughs) yeah i I think it's also important too that uh you should just play the games that you want to play as opposed to playing yeah. what's what's popular and like what's mm-hmm. trending now. Because like mm-hmm. I, I haven't played Red Dead 2 yet or like The Last of Us 2 or anything like that. Like I'm still playing Vampire Survivors, you know. Play, Hell yeah. Hell like, yeah. The, don't play a game because people tell you that it's good. Play what you want to play. Yeah. Oh, yep. Hundred yeah. percent. You are I mean, these games are long. You are much more likely to get all the way through and have a good time if it's something that you're interested in, uh, for sure. If you're so, not having fun, that's usually a sign that you should probably play something yeah, else. Yeah, you probably should, you probably yeah. should uh, put it down. That's it's, yep. You know, I there's a there's a notion out there that video games have to be fun uh, in order for you to get something, like get a good experience out. And I don't think that that's necessarily true. However, if you're going to play a game that is long, like the ones we're talking about, like 50 plus hours, it better be fun in some capacity or it better have a great story that you're having fun with. Yeah, there's a, it's a sliding scale of that. Story needs to be yeah. great. Story's not great. Gameplay needs to be great. It needs to yeah. balance itself out somewhat. Yeah, like Jared, exactly. we, we've we been talking about Scorn a little bit. By the time people oh, hear yeah. this episode, Scorn will be out of the zeitgeist, I bet. But we've oh, been yeah, talking about so. that. <laughs> it is 
it, it's a blessing that that game's as short as it is because um oh, it was any longer can you imagine if that you. game was like 25 hours long like no i felt like way. the game I, that <laughs> five hours or so i played was long as hell Jeez. yeah <laughs> yep so all right cool well this has been a really good talk um i had budgeted an hour for us to talk and we're well past that but <laughs> i'm really happy with uh the examples that everyone came up with Thanks again to everyone who wrote in. Uh, we appreciate your input too. Uh, before we say goodbye, I want to give all of you a chance to uh, plug your shows and where people can find you. So uh, Jared, again, I'll kick to you next or kick to you first. Yeah, if you guys just Google Play Along Podcast, uh, our anchor or Twitter, or that stuff usually is like the first thing that comes up. So you can check us out there. We'll be a link tree that has all of our socials, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Um, yeah. Check us out. Yeah. And Bill? Um, so s- s- same as Jared, uh, you, I have a link tree. It's a uh, link tree slash the barbecue games. Um, you can find uh, links to both my shows. I have gaming collecting. That's, uh, obviously my main show. And then I also have a sec- second show called the, uh, 3DO experience, which is a retrospective podcast talking about the 3DO console and the, the company behind it. Right on. And finally, Aaron. Yeah, so you, you can look up super pod saga anywhere. Uh, of course we have a link tree as well. Thanks to our spotify apple music whatever uh or apple podcast and our, our youtube where we always have random stupid gameplays sonic r has gotten 63 views for some reason that's <laughs> us Super Pod saga yeah you feel the sunshine <laughs> it yeah. brightens up your day <laughs> and if you uh look up super pod saga again you'll find that sweet mario and luigi rpg cover mm-hmm. you can't miss yeah, it yeah so it's cool. really good. good money for it worth every yep. penny <laughs> yep so uh, again, a recommendation for everybody to check out Play Along Podcast, uh, Gaming and Collecting, The 3DO Experience, and Super Pod Saga. Very good uh, gaming podcast to fill your workday or whatever else you're doing while you're listening to podcasts. Uh, for Tales from the Backlog, as always, uh, consider joining the Discord server if you'd like to come in and chat about games and life and everything like that. Uh, this show is listener-supported via Patreon. All of those contributions go towards equipment upgrades, buying games for the show and stuff like that. I appreciate each and every uh, one of you patrons very much. Otherwise, leaving ratings on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, if you've enjoyed the show, that's very helpful. And consider listening to a top three podcast, which is my other show doing top three lists. So thank you, Jared. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Aaron, for coming on the show. I appreciate you guys very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thanks for having me again, dude. Yeah, thank you. And everybody else, thank you for listening. Tune in next week for the next game that comes out of the backlog.